Okay, I think it's about time. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Liang Yan. I'm a, a performance engineer from CoreView. Um, CoreView is a, a GPU cloud provider based in New York. And uh, we mainly provide uh, GPU to our customer based on our Kubernetes cloud. Uh, cloud. And uh, for me, I'm kind of a uh, yeah, performance side for the whole uh, our AI infrastructure, basically like uh, how to make our platform more efficient, uh, uh, utility uh, using more efficient and uh, have better performance, either for one node or for the whole cluster and uh, provide a consultant to our customer to get a better uh, machine learning performance. So today my topic is uh, optim optimize your AI cloud infrastructure, but from a hardware perspective. I know uh, for a lot of the machine learning stuff, most of them from the software side, from the algorithm side, uh, but today we are going to looking from a totally different angle. So, yeah, uh, basically I'll give some background of the AI cloud and uh, why we want to optimize that uh, from the AI model, like uh, how AI model uh, evolves these days and why they, they want AI infrastructure optimized. And uh, then uh, before getting into the real optimization, we had some basic uh, idea about how AI infrastructure looking. How, how their performance from the physical uh, layer. And uh, last is based on uh, MMMPerf platform. Uh, we actually don't really use MMMPerf, but I choose some of the machine uh, learning mode from there and uh, do some analysis and uh, optimize that. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of different uh, benchmark there. So here is, here, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more when it comes there, when it goes there. So, yeah, this is mostly uh, from uh, from our kind of uh, optimization process, some kind of uh, uh, for training, for inference, and uh, 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 how we are shared of the vision we have, and some kind of practice tips here in the future. So, here. So, it's quite interesting when talking about the AI infrastructure. I actually gave a topic for NVIDIA GTC a couple of years ago. It's uh, 2020, I think, before Transformer there. So at that time, all the machine model is small. There's no that parameter, the data set is not huge. Uh, even I think neural network is not that popular. Mostly even from the traditional machine learning, like uh, at VM, kind of a reinforcement re learning algorithm, which is get, get popular now today. And also there's like the CNN, RNN, that's most of that. So by that time, we actually, our customer actually more curious, like uh, how we could uh, uh, want our GPU, per GPU, more efficient. Because uh, all these kind of uh, machine learning, the model, the data set, couldn't even uh, fill in one node. So they want to like how to split the GPU. Uh, virtualization or like a CUDA time, time slice kind of things there. But uh, then things after that, uh, after the transformer pops up, everything changed. Now, not only you, you, could, you couldn't use one GPU, you actually need a more, more GPU, more even servers there. So the, the question is totally transferred from like, uh, how could I make my one GPU running multiple machine learning task there becomes like uh, how could I let multiple GPU, multiple servers to run my one machine model there more efficient. So because uh, consequently this becomes a HPC concept, uh, like uh, because that's exactly what HPC uh, did before doing now is that uh, you have a whole computer cluster, you send uh, one task to, to it and uh, the HPC system finishes it for you. So it's quite interesting, but uh, uh, what, because at the time, cloud is already quite popular there, and it's all, all already being used in all different kind of uh, uh, scenario, but mostly like uh, the, the general web service or kind of a SaaS system there. So they have quite a different uh, uh, 
they have they are quite different there. For example, like uh, like we said, HPC is task oriented. It's assuming there's a limited source there. We want to run, we get our job done in these resources. But uh, cloud is totally different. It's like the cloud there. It, their resource is limit is uh, unlimited. All you want is how to use it uh, on your demand elastically. So uh, now when this all kind of cloud stuff and uh, 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 machine learning stuff comes together, it comes to a totally new concept, AI cloud here. So it's kind of everything there. Like uh, we just, uh, uh, the data predicate from the previous topic there, like we needed to do a lot of uh, data process there. So we also want to do the training there. After the training, we want to provide a service to our customer. So we want the inference. But not only this kind of model used there, we want to use them as a product. So it must have a full functional platform there. Besides that, all kind of uh, uh, stories, network, and also some like monitor training. So that's, that's kind of the, that's the, the traditional cloud part. So it's kind of become combining together now, HPC plus the cloud. And then it comes to this new AI cloud. And the new AI cloud also kind of need a different architecture uh, to implement it. We are going to see that uh, right away. So that comes to the whole AI infrastructure idea. So, but uh, yeah, uh, why we, we care about AI infrastructure? Like I said that uh, because uh, the, the new AI infrastructure becomes, uh, I have one model, I have one task, I need multiple things to do that. But uh, does it really true? We can see this is the, the recently large language model evolved tree here. You can see there is a very early from the, the, the small side there, there is a bird, there, can I see? And also the, there is a uh, palm, the general language model from Google and the T5. And uh, on the other side is quite popular. It's uh, the GPT tree. So uh, people may see it's doing well, but uh, if you are looking deep down there, you can see actually infrastructure plays a quite important role for that. So. For example, like, uh, like we just said a couple years ago, when I, work in, when I start working on this all AI stuff, the, the idea, the, the perspective is how run multiple AI task model in one GPU there. And uh, by that time, the, the model is small, the data is small, uh, kind of a, th some one person could do that, or one lab from the university could totally do that. They just buy one GPU node or a couple of GPU nodes there with some hundred key dollars there could totally run. Their research by that time is totally algorithm. But then when things come, when the, especially I think the milestone is the transformer, and uh, suddenly the, the parameter becomes so many because, but there's not that layer there. So also they want more and more data because based on this, uh, uh, this machine model, like they want to have a new, new, uh, new data set there and run, could get a better uh, accuracy and the precision kind of performance there. So that, that's the story start to change now. At that time, so mostly AR start up, AI company they are doing that. They need to set up a GPU cluster now, like one GPU, one GPU server won't fit your, your task anymore. They need to uh, assemble a cluster to do that. But uh, that's not that bad enough, like uh, some, some basic stuff could still do that and still manageable. But still with things go, like uh, when it goes to uh, the, the GBT side and uh, it's kind of uh, expo explode totally. Like uh, they need uh, the, the data set and uh, the model keep going. There's like a uh, uh, trillion kind of a trillion parameters there. The data set also becomes like a trillion, trillion level there, terabyte kind of a data set there. So when do, when do that, when like uh, they, they train a base model there, so it kind of need uh, so many, some like thousands of GPUs there, even uh, tens of thousands of GPUs there. And uh, 
for build one like a llama there from the Meta or the GPT from OpenAI, like when the even only to get this base model, it becomes like uh, 50 kind of million dollars there. So it becomes uh, uh, impossible for most of uh, like the, the academic, uh, the teacher, the professors there or small companies there. So at this time, like people would thinking, how could we get, now the, the total problem becomes like, uh, when we design this model, how it could fit our infrastructure more well. And uh, from this tree here, actually, the reason why GPT is more popular there, because it could fit uh, AI infrastructure, the, the current AI infrastructure more well, better there. Uh, I'll give you more like details of what kind of uh, AI infrastructure we are looking there. But because of that, it could fit AI infrastructure, it could be de deployed in the AI infrastructure uh, easier. So it becomes more popular. So that's why, because it uses the dec decoder only, and uh, it also supports the par par um, parallelism more well, it's easily to scale up in the AI infrastructure there. So it, uh, it being used more and more often in industry. So. Good. Okay. So yeah. So then, like like I said, so when we're talking about the AI infrastructure, what we are really talking about here. Uh, so again, the topic is like I have one model there. I have one training or like uh, inference uh, task there. I want to do. I want it done by multiple GPUs there, and I want it to do it as fast as possible, as efficient as possible. So, but when we're looking at the machine learning stuff there, you can think that because it has a bunch of data there, so the data scientist or like a machine learning engineer, they, they comes to a model, which is a mathematical formula, formulation there. And then it will use to analyze this kind of data to get a uh, probability kind of uh, uh, to find the pattern of the data. So when it comes to the computer architecture side or the AI infrastructure side, it's more like uh, we want to move the data to the device, to the uh, calculate accelerator device as, as fast as possible and we want the, the data loaded into the accelerator as fast as possible. Tra translation would be we want the memory device of the accelerator as fast as possible, and we want the data transfer between the accelerator, either from PCIe device or from the uh, network device there. We want it uh, as fast as possible. And uh, yeah, this is like they want a, a fast data path there to do that. But uh, how do we know which is fast, uh, which is not? So actually, we, we have this uh, profiling here. And uh, uh, of course, accelerated memory is the most fast. It could be like a terabyte per second. And then it's the NVLink. NVLink is also NVDR stuff. It's kind of the bath system, but for GPU only. It could get like, uh, uh, theoretically, it could get the 900 per second, uh, gigabyte per second, but in particular, never get there. It needs some kind of optimization, but generally could get like 400 to 500 there. And also there is uh, the system memory because uh, you, you couldn't uh, only use GPU, you also need a CPU to do there. And also per CPU there's a UPI, the CPU socket, uh, like uh, they could communicate to each other. And also there's uh, the PCIe bus station. And uh, the, the other is CX-7, the network. Like we are, we are using, for our platform we are using CX-7 here, we are using PCIe 5, we are using MLink 4, and we are using S100. So you could see like uh, that, could, that comes to this. Uh, also there's like a uh, storage side, NVMe. That's the slowest uh, components there. So then it comes to here. We can see that mostly if, if everything stays in the GPU, that's perfect, that's the fattest part. But not, sometimes they need a, GPU connect to each other, that's MVLink. That's still not bad, it's 400 to 500 gigabyte there. 
but then they still need to cross a node there. Then it needs a network that becomes the 400 gigabits per second. So now the bottleneck shows up. But if you do, it, do something wrong, you, need, you, you let the data transfer between the, like, see, if they, they between the MME device go to the storage, it's super slow. If you are going to like uh, cross Newman node, the UPI, it gets slow. So now we, we want to keep it as fast as possible. GPU memory and uh, every link uh, minimum go to the CX7. And we don't want any, anything getting involved. That's also like the GPU RDMA. This is the whole topology, but even we get things closer, we zoom in, we go to the GPU device there, it's also quite different. So we already know like uh, GPU memory, it's BM, uh, high bandwidth memory three there, 3.5 kind of uh, terabyte per second, that, that's already fast enough. But if you look at here, it's not fast enough either. Like uh, there is a CAS system, it could get 12 terabytes per second. And there is also like the register uh, cache there, even faster, 31. And also there is a different uh, uh, thing. Anyway, this, yeah, this, you don't need to know any, uh, all of that. Like uh, the modern platform already do all kinds of different uh, optimization there. Even CUDA has also do kind of uh, optimization there from the co compiling system. But the better to know like uh, when there's a really a bottleneck there, when there's really a regression of the network, the, the performance there, you at least know where to look at. And uh, yeah, this is the Evelink and the bandwidth that we talked before. So PTIE bandwidth, that's, uh, that's actually like a GPU if it goes to a network. They actually need, a, uh, they are all PTIE bandwidth, they actually need to go to the PTIE switch. So the, the bottleneck would be like the PTIE file, 64 gigabyte uh, theoretical value. Uh, if it's all MVLink, that's good. MVLink could come to the 300 to 35, and also there's 500 there. Here, it, it actually combined together every link plus the CX7 to do it because when we do the multi node, the multi GPU, they're actually using some open MPI, the collective communication. So they are kind of combining together. Also, because of different kind of optimization, that's why you could see there's even like, because of, CX7, we just said that there's 400 gigabits per second. There's eight there would be 400 gigabytes per second of the, the whole system. But we see there's 500 more. That's obvious uh, over the, the physical limit there. That's because they, are, they have this uh, optimization there. It's called the sharp. They offload the computing to the switch, NVIDIA switch, but you have to use the I, infinite band, the IB uh, switch there, quantum switch there. So in that way, they are really not like uh, transfer broadcast the data to, to each end device. They actually halfway there. That's why you could see some speed bandwidth is even higher than the physical limit there. So that's, yeah, that's the beauty of optimization, right? You know the hardware, you know how to accelerate, how to take full use of the hardware and accelerate it. So yeah, this is, the, this is, the, this is like the PCIe part, like how to, even we, we know this is the bottom, the PCIe bandwidth is bottom. So if we saw some value is way lower than that, for example, why is 85 gigabits there? That's totally insane. So you know there's something wrong, and you go there, you look, you can see there's some PCIe device property setup is wrong. Here it's the ACS and ATS, access can configure both theories and uh, address translation theories. So this is, this is a kind of a, kind of a CAS TRB system in GPU comparing this kind of a cache system TRB for the CPU side. That could accelerate the performance. Also, like for the network, uh, if you, you can use the Ethernet, there's a Rocky there, you, there's also infinite band there. Rocky side, you could only get a 300 or something. And when using the infinite band, you could get a five more, 500 more there. So that's because of the sharp, I just said that a scalable hierarchy, aggregation protocol there, I think, reduction protocol. 
And also there's MPI tag that's kind of, that's basically is to accelerate the network device, the, the network infrastructure. So yeah, so now we see that there is one machine learning task. It has a huge data set. It has a complicated uh, machine model there. We want uh, a bunch of nodes. Each node have uh, um, eight GPUs there. We want it to work as one part. But uh, if you want to make everything work well, you need to know all these kind of things we just discussed. We want the data transfers the, the, the first pass between the device. In this GPU device, we want to use the fastest uh, memory there, like the register cache or the shared memory, L1 cache there. We want everything on the fast pace there. So if you, are, you, you, if you do that in we then all this kind of machine learning stuff would be totally becomes a, a true math. I think that, assuming like we have a huge super machine there, and it's all GPU and all kind of a, a register file there. Even there's no <laughs> memory there. So you don't need to optimize the AI infrastructure anymore. All you do is focus on the machine learning itself. You just want your model very well. But in reality, that's not true. There is a bunch of the AI infrastructure evolved from the traditional cloud there. So there's so many other things that makes it complicated challenge. But that also makes the, the things down when you see. So we know why we want the, why AI cloud is there. And uh, if we want to optimize there, what kind of components we need to focus on. Now let's really do that. So because this is uh, AI cloud. This we are real, we are like uh, help the real AI application there. So we choose. I choose uh, MMR perfect here. Like I said, uh, there's all different kind of benchmark. I I choose here. You can definitely choose different. I choose that because uh, it already have uh, the data sets there. It already have the machine model there, and even there's a bunch of. Uh, uh, results submitted by all these kind of vendors, others. So it would be easily for you to compare the the results, especially like uh, we, I, from the performance side, I, I want to evaluate, uh, validate our our infrastructure and uh, to to see how good that is or there's a regression or if not, how should we uh, accelerate that? So. If you look at the, also it's interesting because uh, if you see the MMPerf, uh, they, they have been long we developed. Uh, today it's 4.1, there's other words than 3, 2, 1, point, uh, 0 0.1 kind of, it's a long way here. And uh, you can see they also evolve, evolve there. Like today, this, they have a lot of a kind of a large language model here. Uh, like the BERT GPT-3. Earlier it's GPT-2, and also have this uh, stable diffusion, and also have the, the RGT, kind of GN, that's pretty new. So the other side is inference. So inference is uh, you have your data set, you have your model, you just uh, evaluate uh, how fast uh, you could get your results. And uh, the other side is the training, that's uh, pure scratch from scratch built there. So. And also you see, they remove some kind of uh, machine learning there. That's kind of the retinet. So like uh, the very early days kind of a neural network is being <laughs> get, get rid of now. The retinet uh, and RNN. So now they're all kind of the, most of them are transformer oriented. There's also like, uh, of course there's also the DRM and the 3D net. There's still part, but uh, the trend is like all industry looking on large language model now. That's that's actually that's actually also during our test that we also see the limit uh, clearly because like for the RNN, I'll, I'll talk to that later because when we run this test, we can see it's easily. Uh, kind of affected by by disk device there or by other uh, affections there. So it's not that stable, not that good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's some metrics like uh, 
of course, there's also other. I just uh, choose some that are related to your AI infrastructure, your AI hardware, the hardware, like uh, uh, the utility, like uh, the GPU utility. That's actually not that good. I'll come to that later. And also there's SM, the, the streaming CUDA kernel kind of part. And also there is a tensor call. There is a MFU. MFU is actually quite uh, uh, popular there. Modo, uh, yeah, flops uh, utilization. There's also HFU. HFU is actually more accurate to the hardware, but it's not that easy to calculate. And also time to train. That's that's from the MMPerf. MMPerf only collect the the time to train, to uh, the the time values there. But we needed to use the other one. We needed to collect them by ourselves. Uh, the other side is the inference. Mostly is also like uh, latency. I think most latency and uh, throughput there. Like. Uh, um, how fast you could get a response from the model when you ask a question, when you send a prompt there, and uh, how many prompts they could uh, process in one time. It would like a, what kind of a text you send there. If, you, if you're using open uh, AI, the chat GPT, like if you paste a very long text there, it will like uh, stuck, it, it, they will stuck there because uh, they can't uh, handle that, uh, the throughput of that is not that big enough. So. This is some, and uh, yeah, so this, yeah, this is, uh, comes to the, the question at the first place. One task is so big, data set is big, machine model is big. How do we want to fit in multiple nodes there? So we can split the date, we can split the model, the model, uh, the model layer there, or the model of the tensor, the tensor there, like the data structure, basically. And also pipeline, like uh, what if we make them to small pieces and make them uh, one by one? The, the bottom here is the, the pipeline. And uh, this is kind of a learning from the CPU instruction execution there. So yeah, this is like the AI infrastructure hardware we saw there. This is also difficult because we also needed to, we, how we split them correctly, how we assign them to the right uh, device, the memory or the device correctly. So this, this is all challenge. Uh, luckily, there's some, some already some kind of work could do that automatically, like the flex, flex flow, one, uh, one flow, mind uh, spur that can do, they could do that for you. Uh, but uh, like I said, uh, this is just like uh, the, uh, the, like the transmission here, automatic or manual. If you want to get a, a, the best performance somehow, you still need to go back here to look. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so um, like I said, uh, I, I'm kind of a performance system, like a AI, infra infra AI infrastructure performance engineer there. We don't really working on the exact machine model there, large language model there. We actually more interested in the whole platform, how the platform working in our cloud infrastructure. So here is some platform here. This is for training. Today, most uh, training sites they are using Megatron LM, uh, a platform from the NVIDIA, and also there's a deep speed from the Microsoft there, and also like if you, you hugging fist, I think that's very popular. Using the accelerator could do some kind of a. Uh, Training and also uh, Clouser AI. There's also uh, one for uh, cluster there. There's uh, of course there's also others. I just pick I just uh, pick something we used there, and uh, we like we we choose we have our infrastructure there. The and then we set up the platform. We run some uh, MMPerf kind of the machine model from the MMPerf like a. Uh, it, it, you're still there. There's like a stable diffusion and the GPT, I, I use a GPT-2 and also some other there. So it's easily you could compare like uh, how good in this platform then goes to the other platform and it goes to the other platform. Then we collect all the metrics I, I showed you earlier there. The, the metrics here, oh, no, here. So you know what kind of value you need to comparing with. 
And uh, here is uh, the inference. So like I said, uh, we don't work on the model, but we also don't, we are not also limited uh, to training. We, we're looking at everything there. We're also using the TensorRT LIM and VRM. There's also a new one, I'm just to start looking, the deep speed. Uh, they're very pretty good for the inference. So here, like I said, uh, the training side, we, like we have that platform, we run different kind of uh, model here. So, uh, the first one is interesting for the GPU utilization. As I said, that uh, this this value is quite uh, interesting. Like uh, sometimes, if you see it's uh, it's lower, that that means uh, yes, your system is bad. But uh, even it's higher. Like if you saw it's a hundred percent there, it doesn't mean your system is good. So it's not that uh, kind of uh, accurate. So we actually move from uh, the GPU utilization goes to the uh, MFU, the model flops utilization. Also there's a FM, uh, actually FM utilization there is also useful even than the, uh, the GPU utilization. So, so for example, we have run the Llama 2 we actually get the best utilization from uh, Closet AI. We ran the GPT-2. We got the best from the Megatron LM. Uh, Mythro 7, 8B, that's new. We just started. This is a kind of a Mythro expert. It's quite a new. This is a new in the uh, MMPerf. This is a, a standard for the MOE today, the, the latest. Uh, uh, machine learning, the AI model kind of uh, uh, you, you over there, the, the trends there. And also there's RGAT. This is the GNN, I said the graphic uh, neural network there. That's, that is really new. We also just uh, do that. We, it's, yeah, we, we run that, uh, we haven't go that. So far I needed to figure out the auto memory issue there. We, once we input the, the data set, it totally auto the memory. So, okay, uh, yeah, this is kind of uh, the, the direction, the principle we are using when we do the optimization there. So there's a different uh, angle, you can uh, do different. Uh, so I, I don't put it, yeah, so I, I don't go get into there, just to show you the slides here. Basically, it's still the same, like uh, the, the principle is, is the same, like, uh, we have this data here, we have this model here. We want the data goes to the fattest path there. And we also want the data load into the, the fattest memory there. And we want them, like we want to decrease the, the memory movement, the, the data movement and that. In that way, like they could do the uh, fusion there. And also like, uh, if you want to put more things into the memory, you also need to uh, think a way how to decrease the memory uses there. That's for, that is like the, uh, the MHA, MQA, the GQA, that, that kind of a direction. And also uh, FFN to MOE there, that is also like uh, you only focus less parameters there. So like uh, you use, you're using less memory there. You do less com uh, com computation there to make it fast. So uh, deep down, the, the, the whole optimization principle is similar, but you need to know like the, the foundation there. Like uh, I just to show you how the hardware, the limitation there when do the, uh, you also need to, we don't do the model there, but you also need uh, to make sure, uh, you're familiar with that. When you do the split, you, you need to make sure which part doing kind of what kind of work, with, which kind of the hardware would, would fit more better. So here is some, uh, Teach like the some lessons we learn or see. So, like uh, uh -huh. yeah. So very earlier, like I said, I'm actually working on multiple model in one GPU. So we actually looking on the virtualization, containerization, or kind of a uh, GPU slice there. As today, I think they actually have very good performance already. Like if you are only thinking one GPU 
or even like uh, one node eight uh, GPU there using FXM there, you could still get a very good performance. And uh, like I said, RNN, yeah, RNN there kind of get rid of, uh, they, they needed to do optimization for sure so far because of the, RNN is kind of a time sequence uh, uh, kind of machine model there. Uh, it, it's not, uh, it doesn't support uh, distributed or, or parallel very well. So it's easily kind of make the, the disk I.O. Or, or, or kind of data loader becomes the bottleneck. Also, yeah, when you see auto memory, the first response, it do to change the batch size and uh, get, make it smaller. Of course, if you change it smaller, your utilization is also uh, lower. And also, there's others here, yeah, memory side. And then, uh, be careful with the PCIe topology there. It may cause performance, and it, when it causes the performance lower, uh, it's, it's very difficult to debug there. Also, like the nickel there, that's why, no matter what, just run nickel, when you have this cluster, just run your nickel test first. And also try to, to monitor as possible, as possible. So, yeah. And, uh, okay, yeah. So, AI infrastructure perspective, there's also some cool stuff uh, in flight, uh, like uh, people want the uh, scaling law more than before. It's like uh, to predict, uh, like, uh, uh, your, you have your data set, you have your model there, you need to make sure how many GPUs you need, how big of your cluster should be set up there. And also, uh, cast, uh, heterogeneous memory there, there's like MLink C2C, the GH200, uh, CXL, kind of uh, the, the new kind of hardware there, could uh, uh, support the AI infrastructure. And the other is that the super, super pod or super rack or super compute, whatever you call it. It's like uh, get the one computer more bigger and you could run a bigger machine model and a bigger data set. You don't need to split to a whole cluster. So that's all interesting direction. Uh, yeah, I think that's all on my side. Thank you for attending. Let me know if you have a question. Hopefully we have time here. Otherwise, you find me in the desk. <laughs> Any question here? Uh, thank you for your presentation. It was really interesting. I, and uh, I, I was really impressed about the number you have shared about uh, in the presentation about, you know, communication cost and also the, uh, you know, uh, like uh, NVMe and or in, uh, networking. And so my question is related to that communication cost. Uh, uh, I've, uh, I've heard there is a movement trying to introduce uh, optics communication between uh, board and also between chips and also in intra chips. And do you think is that going to be a game changer of the uh, AI computing infrastructure? Uh. I like, uh, you know, movement like uh, ION and known as. Uh, the, the, this part? Sorry. Are you seeing the data movement? Uh? Ah, yes, data movement, like, you know, uh, communication between node to node or perhaps uh, both on the different nodes or chips on the different nodes. Yes, uh, like uh, that, that depends on, I think so far that's the, that's the limit. Like if you really run that, you could see, if, if, for example, if uh, uh, if you're like uh, the, let me show you here. For example, uh, for for example, if one of your node get very low number, eighty five gig per second there, the whole nickel system there would be super would never get to the three hundred or five hundred there. In that case, you could see your your uh, your training time extremely longer there. So I think at that, this moment, it's a very important part. Especially like uh, the, the GPU, all the other parts are already very fast. All the GPU computation, the frequency there is very high. It's, yeah, it, you need to be very careful. Like 
It couldn't limit it to how best you could get, but it definitely caused how worst you could be there. I see, I see. Uh, thank you. Okay, I think the time's up here. Thank you again for attending. Feel free to reach me or send me an email if you are interested or have any question. Thanks.